In the last section, we had covered topics like listeners, aggregate report, view results tree, etc. Today we will start with section 4, designing test plan. In this section, we will be covering 5 topics. Topic 1, workload designing. Topic 2, script validation. Topic 3, baseline test. Topic 4, master slave configuration. And Topic 5, GUI and non-GUI mode testing. Let us start with Topic 1, Workload Designing. Workload designing includes configuring the load across all scenarios in scope, predefining the test duration, ramp up time, etc. Adding required timers and assertions in scripts, verifying the controllers in scripts, etc. Before starting a baseline test, it is very important to design the workload with all scenarios in scope so that the real-time behavior of users is simulated properly. The most important thing is to configure the think time in the scripts. Think time is the time taken by a user between consecutive mouse clicks on the application. For example, on the login page, a user might take around 10 to 15 seconds for entering his credentials. The function in JMeter for simulating think time is called constant timer. I will now add this timer to the first request in the script, which is request number 14. Here, I will right click on request number 14, I will go to add, I will go to timer and I will click on constant timer. The thread delay parameter here is the time to be set. The unit is milliseconds. The timer should always be added as a child of the request so that before the request is fired, user will wait for the defined time. I will set it to 5 seconds. So I will enter 5000 milliseconds. Now I will copy this timer function and paste it in all the remaining requests. I am copying it and I am pasting it in the request 46. Similarly, I paste it in 56. Similarly, request number 204, request 259 and finally request 307. So now we have a total of 6 requests and think time will be defined for all these 6 requests. The next step is to add assertions in the script. In request numbers 307, there is already an assertion in place which is here. We had added this earlier so I will just check if it is properly configured. It is recommended to use minimal assertions to avoid memory issues in the load generators. So I will not add any more assertions here. I will now verify if all the transaction controllers are in place. I will verify the checkbox generate parent sample is checked and the next checkbox is unchecked. The second checkbox should be unchecked because it will add the think time and processor timings into it for the response time measurements. I will now check the thread group settings here. Assume we want to do a load test of 10 users for 30 minutes. So I am going to design this workload now. The first parameter is action to be taken after sampler error. I will check the radio button start next thread loop. The thread properties section will have the number of thread setting which will be kept as 10 for now because we want 10 concurrent users. The ramp up period will be 20 seconds which means each user will enter into the system every 2 seconds. The loop count option will be set to forever because we want to do the test for 30 minutes. The next step is to configure the scheduler which is the duration. This checkbox would be checked and the duration parameter here will be set as 1820 seconds which is nothing but the ramp up period of 20 seconds plus 30 minutes peak load which is nothing but 1800 seconds. The remaining parameters will be kept as it is since this duration parameter will override all other parameters. The other option is to keep this duration parameter blank and set the start and end time with their absolute timings so that there would be a difference of duration 30 minutes. So to revise again the duration set here is 1820 seconds which is including both ramp up time as well as peak load time. So guys we are done with the workload designing part.